Hi there, Janet Fritz here for Galaxy Girl Creations. Welcome to my channel. Welcome to Mixed Media Mayhem. And we are working with a beautiful sketch, but I'm not really sure who it's from. Um, there was no name on it. And uh, I don't know, the person who chose the sketch did not post the name that I saw anyway. Um, so my apologies if it is your sketch. It is beautiful. And I really enjoyed scrap lifting it. So I pulled out some cheesecloth because I know I want to have some texture on my paper and I'm just using some Vicky Booten foundation paper. I was at a crop and I didn't have uh, my foam boards available to tape this down. So I'm pretty sure that is why I just went with the plain paper, not taped down. And the Vicky Booten paper doesn't warp nearly as bad as some of the other papers. So that's why one of the reasons I chose it. Um, the other reason I chose it is I know it will hold up to all of these layers that I'm going to end up putting on here. So I started out with just some white acrylic paint that I bought, uh, bought I borrowed from a friend at the crop because I didn't bring mine with me. And I am just using it to kind of hold this cheesecloth in place. Now it's not really glue and um, I don't know actually if it will hold up over time. And so I will be adding some um, matte gel medium and uh, mixing it together to actually hold it in place. So there's the matte gel medium and that's from Deco Art. And I am just using that mixed with the white paper paint to kind of make sure it's kind of got like some sort of adhesive properties to it. So um, I'm not really sure why I didn't go over it with something else to hold it in, but that was, that's what I ended up going with. So, and it worked fine. I didn't have any problems with it uh, in the long run and um, it seems to hold okay. So I recommend just doing one layer of your cheesecloth on your paper because uh, I did do it with multiple layers on a different layout and it, it shows up a lot. And I don't know if you want it to show up a lot, that's fine. But in that, in my particular case, I didn't want it to be, um, it didn't blend well with the plain paper. And I'm kind of going to have that same issue here, even though it's just one layer. I don't want my paper to be completely flat and then all of a sudden go into this textured pa uh, textured bit where the cheesecloth is. I want it to blend a little nicer. And so I will be pulling out my modeling paste from Deco Art, and um, I will be adding that uh, to kind of give it a little bit more of a texture kind of um a lot like your walls might have uh so that's kind of the look i'm going for and you can see i'm just kind of like scooping up the matte gel not the modeling paste not matte gel um the modeling paste and i'm kind of like just dabbing it on and um really especially where the areas are of the uh cheesecloth meet the paper. I don't want it to be just, you know, cheesecloth and then paper. I want it to kind of blend better. And there it is um, with the texture paste. And now I'm going to go over it with some white acrylic paint from Dilutions. And uh, that is basically to get it all the same color because the modeling paste that provided all that texture was slightly different color than the painted um, portions where the cheesecloth was and so this is going to make it all one single color <clears throat> pardon me I'm losing my voice a little bit and so that kind of really helps and so then I pulled out some paper glitz from Picket Fence Studio and I'm mixing that up because as you saw there the glitter kind of all goes to the bottom at some point and I'm just kind of brushing this on I'm not going for texture I'm not going like through a stencil or anything I'm just going for that really shiny look and boy is it shiny it's really pretty uh, this is one of the first times that I've used it um, I did try it out once through a stencil but for it was a little bit thin for my liking uh, it didn't it didn't uh, hold up as well as like their texture or their uh, paper glaze which I absolutely love um, but I really liked this uh, applied in this fashion and it's so sparkly and so beautiful. Um, 
oddly, it kind of reminds me of a snail trail, <laughs> but um, which I know sounds bizarre, but uh, it's really pretty and so shiny. Now I pulled out my Vicky Booten art crayons and I tested the three blues, the three darker blues, and I ended up going with the one that comes in. I don't even know. I'm looking at the box right now. It's the one that comes in the box that has the browns in it. Um, and it's really the only blue in there. And I basically just kind of rub it on and then I take my paintbrush that has a little bit of moisture on it and kind of scribble it along. And that is kind of looks like what the inspiration piece has on it. Although it looks like she kept hers more towards that diagonal line. Um, I kind of spread mine out a little bit more. I just kind of kept the darker pieces in the diagonal line. Now she does have some fabric twin, twin, fabric um, trim on her layout. Uh, it looks kind of like lace, but I didn't have anything that was specifically like that. So I just used this. Um, I think this is called eyelet. I'm not really sure. Um, <laughs> I just used what I had on hand and I just trimmed it down to be a little bit narrower because it was pretty wide. Now I am going to use some modeling paste, not modeling paste. I keep interchanging these two um, things. It is not modeling paste. It is um, matte gel. I'm going to use the matte gel to hold it down. And same with this burlap ribbon from close to my heart. I don't know what I was thinking. Um, I could have much it would have been much easier to use my hot glue gun just to stick it down. I would not have had to wait overnight for it to dry. But uh, I, for whatever reason, I had it in my mind. I was just going to use this. And so it did have to sit overnight to dry. And it dried fine and everything held on. But um, I did have to put some things on top of it to hold uh, that ribbon in place because it just wanted to curl up. So you're going to see me here using these jars of flowers to just kind of hold the ribbon down so that it would dry. And I'm not using anything like my acrylic block because I didn't want my acrylic block to actually stick to the page because that surface is so large on the acrylic block. I was afraid that it would stick to the page. With these bottles, it's really just the ring around the bottom because the bottom of the bottles are somewhat concave. Um, so it, it does hold them in place, but it doesn't uh, really, I wasn't really afraid it was gonna stick to it. So now everything is finally dry. All of the mixed media is done um, for the most part. I am going to go through and add a little bit of pink uh, down the road here. But um, at the moment, I'm just going to work on my paper layers. And uh, the artist that created this has some beautiful paper layers. And um, they kind of go in every, well, they kind of have like a crosshatch pattern. Um, and I kind of just stuck with more of a traditional layering um, one behind the other. And then I, I tucked a couple pieces in so they look like they are spanning the entire distance, but they're really just peeking out um, from one side because I didn't have uh, papers large enough to go across or to um, make it all the way across the paper in the right width or height. So I am just going to play it up like that. And then I realized I want one at the top and the bottom as well, because I didn't want that craft paper uh, right on top of the burlap ribbon. I wanted some blue in between there. So that's why I went with another layer there. <clears throat> and I have lost my distress tool. I might have mentioned that in a pre previous video, uh, video, but I have a new one on order. So I'm just using my scissors. And the scissors work fine. I just want to get the distress tool because I tend to actually rip the paper a little bit more when I use my scissors. Um, I think I'm just a little bit more aggressive than I need to be with the scissors. So um, I thought I would just go ahead and order a new distress tool and I would um, be happier using that and maybe rip less paper. <clears throat> So now I'm just using some offcuts of that blue paper, blue floral paper, and then I'm going to layer up some of these other blues or these other papers that I used already underneath the photograph. Uh, the photograph is my daughter and is actually taken on her 26th birthday. 
um, they went to the Santa Barbara Zoo, took Noah, and uh, went with her cousin, who is her best friend. And um, if you notice in the photo there, there's a meerkat that is uh, photobombing the, the picture. Um, actually, I think it was set up that way. It was just not really a photo bomb, but um, it's really cute because they're both kind of like have the same kind of look on their face. <laughs> I don't know. Um, so it's kind of cute where he's just behind her. And so I thought I would use this photo because it's a really cute photo of her. Um, I really don't care so much about the mirror cat. He didn't have to be in the photo, but I just thought it was uh, an, a nod to the day that they had and they had a great trip and they had so much fun. So why not? So I did pull out some florals here. I'm not going to put nearly as many as the original um, has on here. Uh, I might have done that if I thought I was going to frame this layout, but uh, I don't think I'm going to frame this. It's going to go into her album. I do have some framed layouts of her with a lot of flowers on them. And so I, I figured, you know what, I'm going to keep this one a little bit more simple. Um, in the original, there are some buttons that are uh, included as well and rather than keeping the buttons or putting the buttons separate from the flowers I decided to use them as the centers of these blue flowers because there were no centers of the blue flowers and they needed something there and so I thought those buttons were a good option and those buttons are just from, uh, from basic gray so they're um, really old and have been in my stash a while and I wanted to get them used up the flowers I think might be Prima they could be some other brand I'm not really sure got them from a uh, friend of mine at another crop and so I went ahead and decided to use those and I really like these little brown ones I thought those brought um, in a lot of the brown layers that I've already got going on and since the photo has so much brown in it I wanted to go ahead and use that and then I definitely wanted to use this acrylic title from Colorcast Designs and it's this really soft blush pink and so I pulled out my Heidi Swap Color Shine in, um, it's actually called Blush. And so I used that to bring in more of that pink color. Uh, I really just wanted a very soft pink. And the fabric kind of shows it a little darker, but once it dries, it's much softer than uh, it looks on the screen right now. And so I thought that would be just a nice nod to that blush pink title that I'm going to use on there. So I'm liking how this is coming together. I have, I am just using some glue dots to go ahead and stick everything down. Um, on the acrylic piece, the E actually was broken off, but there is a backing on the uh, title or on the acrylic. And I decided to leave the backing on there because I want it less transparent than it would be if I peeled that backing off. And that backing was actually holding that E onto the R. Um, it would be simple enough if you didn't want the backing and the letter, the E was separated, you could just easily glue it down right next to it and nobody would know the difference. But um, in this case, the backing held it on there and it did the work for me. And then I finally did do did pull out my glue gun to adhere these flowers. Um, I was going to use glue dots, which I did use on the blue ones, but then uh, I didn't have glue dots that were small enough to do these. I didn't have enough glue dots that were small enough to do these uh, little tiny flowers. I am just about out of the tiniest glue dots or Zots, Bling, whatever brand. I have both um, and I use them interchangeably, um, but I'm out of almost out of both of them at this point. So I decided to go ahead and just use the glue gun and uh, it works much better anyway because sometimes those glue dots, they peel off the back of the flowers, uh, taking some of the um, paper that the flower is made out of with it. So while I add those uh, last few flowers, I just wanted to remind you that this is a weekly hop that we are doing. So we have an insp inspiration piece um, each week and the last Friday of the month, you are welcome to join in. There is a public group that you can join to uh, participate and the uh, inspiration piece for that has already been posted. So you can go and check that out and you'd have plenty of time to get your layout ready if this is something that you are interested in. Um, 
this month we are going to be scrap lifting our own Rebecca Lockhart. And uh, so go and check out the public page for that. The list is down below. Um, and so is the link for the public page so that you can go and find out what uh, layout we are going to scrap lift of Rebecca's and join us. So um, we are having a lot of fun with this and uh, I think it's always fun to see how uh, other people translate mixed media onto their page from uh, an ins inspiration piece. So I decided to go ahead and add a little bit of foliage, but I'm adding it in gold instead of green. And uh, part of that is I didn't want to add another color to this layout, but I also like the pops of gold that it gives. It kind of dresses it up just a little bit. And those little pieces of foliage were from a Pink Fresh Studio package. And I want to say it was from Everyday Musings, but I'm not 100% sure of that because some of my ephemera has been uh, commingling. So shame on it. Um, <laughs> they uh, have gone from one bag to the other. And I just don't have them in front of me to be able to tell you actually for sure which collection those sprigs are from. But I'm just cutting them apart and um, having little pieces here and there poking out. And I actually only end up using one of the two sprigs. So I, I still have a whole nother sprig to use somewhere else. Um, and it didn't really need a whole bunch of foliage because I kept my clusters kind of small and um, I didn't really go big with the flowers, which I kind of like. Um, I have been known to do really like a lot of flowers on a layout here and there. But in this case, because like I said, I want to keep it in my album. I didn't want to go too crazy with the flowers and have them all be smashed. I kind of stuck to ones that uh, will work better if they get flattened than like the little tiny rosettes per se. Um, so uh, this little pink circular piece is also from Pink Fresh Studio. I think it's from the same collection. And I'm just tucking that in there. I will probably just write the date on it and there will be very little journaling on here. Maybe just um, noting that it's her birthday and, um, you know, a, maybe a little note to her. Uh, I will probably hide some journaling maybe on the back of the layout as well uh, just to put a note there so that maybe down the road if she pulled it out and read it it would be like a little hidden surprise for her um, but for the most part like I said there's not going to be a ton of journaling on here because I do have a lot of photos from the zoo trip that I will be scrapbooking for her her. I don't need to kind of go overboard about where they are, or what they're doing. Um, I just wanted to note that it's her birthday and, I, and we adore her. So I pulled out several different sequin packs and I am just uh, using those as the centers of my flowers. That's not something I do very frequently. I tend to um, not use sequins as the centers, but in this case, I thought it would be a nice little way to dress up the layout, which kind of has a, a little bit of a shabby chic look to it since it's got the burlap and the the lace. So, um, or what is something that is similar to lace anyway. So I'm liking the way that it's looking. Um, I did try some darker sequins in the center of those light blue flowers, and then I decided to take take them out and switch them to a light blue rather than like a darker pink and I like the way that those look better so I went more with a tone on tone for the colored flowers the little burlap one it's kind of a um a white sequin it's not really white it's kind of a pearlescent white in the middle and I like how that looks as well so there's the finished layout um, don't forget to check out everyone else who played along the links again are down below uh, for your convenience. If you have questions or comments, please feel free to leave those. I will get back to you as quickly as I can. And I do read every single one and I appreciate them so much. So um, if you enjoyed this video, I'd love for you to give it a thumbs up. And if you're not already subscribed to my channel, I would love for you to subscribe as well. I will see you guys again next week with another video. Bye-bye.